Hey, it's Joshua Vergar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And it's time for another dose of the week's top Android news. It's Android Authority Weekly. We start with a ton of Computex news and ASUS, ASUS, ASUS. Quite literally, because at their keynote for this year's Computex at Taipei, they announced three new products for the upcoming year. We start off with the new Transformer Pad Infinity, a Tegra 4 powered beast capable of 2560 by 1600 resolution in its 10 inch screen. You'll be able to extend that resolution even further through the ability to output a 4K signal through the HDMI port on the device. 4K? That's like way more than 1080p. The second device announced by ASUS is a transformer with a little bit of an identity crisis. The Transformer Book Trio is a tablet capable of running Android and Windows 8. I know, right? Now before you get too excited, the dual functionality is only available when you have the tablet attached to the keyboard dock. This is because the bits inside the tablet run Android and the bits inside of the dock run Windows 8. Pricing is not available yet, but I'm guessing, as does our community, that it's going to be around the same price as a notebook. So now you can get all fancy. So will you be using Android or Windows today, sir? Yes. The last announcement we're covering from ASUS is of a new phone pad, and now it comes with a little friend. The tablet in the States and huge phone everywhere else is now getting a Note-like stylus. So now what you're getting is a Intel Atom dual core processor, an eight megapixel camera, front-facing speakers, and then of course that included stylus. More Computex news comes out of Intel's camp with their new Merrifield processor. We may start to see some variety from the ARMs and the Snapdragons of the Android world as Intel's presence grows. The next iteration is a lower powered 22 nanometer processor with a focus on battery life. The previous processor, Medfield, was already pretty beastly, so we're gonna have to see what Merrifield can bring us. We don't yet know how many cores the 2014 slated processor has, but come on, you know us. We gotta have a lot of cores. Come on, come on. And now we get into a lot of Samsung news. If you haven't been following the patent wars, and I know you're probably tired of it just like me, well, Samsung did get a big court win over Apple this week. It was ruled that Apple has violated a Samsung patent, effectively causing a sales ban on some Apple products. Now, before you ask, they aren't any current devices. Well, Apple has since vowed to appeal. Yeah, big surprise. But what is interesting is that Samsung is not making a peep about this win. Why? Well, maybe Samsung is too big of a company to boast about a small win like this. True to form, a debate sparked out in our comments, and you're welcome to join in on the conversation here on this video or at the written article at androidauthority.com. Let's get back to devices. Samsung stayed in the news this week with the announcement of a variation to the Galaxy S4. Following the trends of water resistance and dust proofing that we're seeing these days, the Galaxy S4 Active was announced and it is a IP67 certified device that is dust proof and can be submerged in up to one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. Apparently it's supposed to handle anything from the most rugged mountain trails to the roughest rivers, which means it's perfect for kids. One of our commenters made the good point that though this is a ruggedized phone that we're seeing now, it's still a high-end device. Very fair point, it's not something that we see every day. Rest assured that we're gonna get our hands on it the moment it gets out in the States, which is going to be sometime this summer, and we're gonna test it out thoroughly. Yeah, man, we're gonna dunk it in water, we're probably gonna drop it, and then for the dust proofing, we're gonna gather a bunch of dust, and then, oh, that's disgusting. Speaking of the original Galaxy S4, it may not all be sunshine and rainbows like some people predicted. Samsung's flagship device may not achieve as high sales as was previously anticipated as some analysts report. What resulted was a massive sell-off by some investors. Now we know that analysts can sometimes get things wrong, but what we do know is that Samsung pulled back on their 30 million unit projection for Q3 and said, eh, maybe 20. What we also know is that Samsung sales in the States still remain very high and are remaining pretty steady. So the reports are somewhat conflicting. Have you gotten your S4 yet? Do you plan to? Let us know in the comments below. Okay, let's move on to something a little more cheery, like the NSA peeping in on your phone records. In a court order uncovered this week, it was found that the NSA wants every call every day of Verizon's telephony records, all of them. No discrimination, no specifics, just all of them. 
Of course, customers of the phone carrier in the US are naturally freaking out. Rest assured that they are not listening in on the calls, they just want to know who called who and when. Yeah, that's better. Also, the data is just about the call, so no personal information is going to be revealed. Okay. As to why only Verizon and nobody else, well, perhaps it has to do with the carrier's reach and their scope. As to what will be done with the information, on the other hand, maybe the NSA is looking for anomalies. After all, the court order was issued shortly after the Boston Marathon bombings. If you're a customer of Verizon, or even if you're not, let us know what you think in the comments below or at the written article found at AndroidAuthority.com. And finally, we end on a piece of good news for all of you Sony fans out there. After first the Samsung Galaxy S4 and then the HTC One, it looks like the Sony Xperia Z is going to be the next device to get the Nexus experience. Given some tips from sources, and then Sony's longtime commitment to AOSP, this is very likely to happen. And in related news, around half of Sony Xperia Z users around the world all collectively went... Damn. And then a final nugget of information suggests that Motorola will indeed be coming out with the Moto X. Only one though, as X doesn't seem to pertain to a line of phones, but rather one particular device. So the coming months look like they're going to get pretty exciting. All right, that'll about do it for this edition of Android Authority Weekly. A written companion can be found in a link in the description below. While you're down there though, you might as well drop us a like, subscribe, and then remember to tune in. Join me next week at the same time and same place. AndroidAuthority.com, your source for all things Android.